This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage that you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. Matt Miller from ESPN joins us here on the OTP. Matt, there's so many things that I want to ask you about, but I feel like I need before we get into the football stuff, you know, okay. we need to go all the way back to the beginning because you're from Joplin, Missouri. That's right. And you were working for a CFL team there. How do you <laughs> get from that to ESPN being one of their main draft analysts. A lot of luck. It was <laughs> a lot of luck and being in the right place at the right time. I went from, you know, working for CFL and AFL teams to a, a little company called Bleacher Report was starting up and needed <laughs> writers. I had never heard of it before, but I saw a posting on the internet and thought, you know, I could do that because I had always, you know, I had a blog doing mm -hmm. what I do now, but only like 10 people were reading it back then. <laughs> And I applied at Bleacher Report in 2010, and, like, the rest is history. So it's been a crazy 13-year ride from coaching semi-pro football <laughs> and working for, you know, $50 a scouting report for the CFL. But it's been a lot of fun. And in 2023, during the draft in Kansas City, you were able to be a part of ESPN's draft coverage. What was that experience like? Oh, my gosh. I mean, literally a dream come true. Not just to be, you know, on ESPN sitting – next to Mel Kuyper and Lewis Riddick covering the draft before it to happen and, you know, uh, close to your hometown. You know, my, my family, I didn't know they were going to be there, but they surprised me, like, right before we went on air. They're like, hey, turn around. And I'm like, what? You know, and, and oh, like, my mom so and dad nice. are standing there with my wife and kids, and it's like I have 30 seconds before I'm live on TV, so, like, I can't get emotional, but it's like it was – such a great moment to have that. So it was it was great. That's incredible. And you write just all of the things draft related. <laughs> and one of the main things that you do or that I consume a lot of is the mock drafts, of course. Um, everybody loves a good mock draft. And when people are putting those things together, what is step one? Where do you start? Yeah, I mean, you have to have a good foundation of team needs, scheme fits. You have to have a good foundation of where players are ranked. But I think a good mock draft relies on information. You know, it's not what I would do. It's what Rand Carthon is going to do. And so you have to have those connections. Uh, maybe it's not always the general manager. Maybe it's not always the head coach. But those connections to say, like, hey, where, where are you guys leaning? Or hopefully they can help you kind of complete that puzzle of, you know, maybe we're looking at pass rushers or maybe we're looking at offensive tackles. And then I can kind of do the rest of the work and say, okay, well, this is the, the offensive tackle who might be there. or This is the wide receiver who might be there. So it's, it's having those that you got to be organized so that you know, all right, here are the players who should be drafted in that range. Here's what that team actually needs. Here's maybe the player profile that they like. And then you can connect the dots a little bit. Well, and having that experience in the CFL and the AFL, you're able to probably have a lot of sources or connections. There's so much overlap now. Oh, no, absolutely. And that's a nice way of saying I'm old in this business now, <laughs> right? I, that's why I appreciate that. But it is, you know, over time, when I started, I was in my mid-20s, which is what a lot of area scouts are in their mid-20s. So I think I was approachable in that way because we're about the same age, you know, and it was it made it easier. And so it's been fun to watch those guys, you know, come up through the business at the same time that I have been and be able to keep those connections. So here in Indianapolis at the Scouting Combine, there's been a lot of conversation about the offense, about quarterbacks, wide receivers, the offensive line. Everybody's very excited about all of those things. So, of course, I would like to talk about the defensive side of oh, the ball. Oh, there we go. We'll yeah. flip it. Yeah. yeah, I would like to talk about those players, those position groups, give them some love. Um, is there a defensive position group that you are really excited about watching this week? Yeah, I think the corner position is, is always fun because those guys are really fast. You know, that's <laughs> a lot of fun to watch. But also, I think we're, we're still trying to figure out who is who in this class. You know, I think uh, Terry and Arnold from Alabama is one of my favorite players in the entire draft. So I would say, okay, he's corner one, but who's next? You know, is it Quinion Mitchell, who had a great senior bowl? Is it Ennis Rakestraw from Missouri? Is it something like Kool-Aid McHistory from Alabama? So I think that's what makes this a really important week is getting all those players together and being able to evaluate them side by side and try to, you know, break some of those ties in your rankings. I know that the defensive line position is something that has been talked a little bit because some say there's a lot of depth there. Some say ah, there's a pretty big drop-off. What is your evaluation? No, I, th I think there is depth, but I do think there is a, a drop-off as well. So, like, when you get past the, the number five defensive end, for example, there's going to be a drop-off, and you're starting to look at players who maybe are more toolsy than they are a, a complete project or a complete prospect, excuse me, but then a defensive tackle. There's Byron Murphy from Texas who's going to go pretty early. And then there's a drop-off. And we're waiting to see, you know, does someone like Jerzon Newton from Illinois or Tavondre Sweat from Texas 
do they take that next step and get into maybe the top 40 picks? So uh, the combine is going to be huge for figuring out those tiers and to find out where those drop-offs are. But um, I, I agree, you know, defensive end, we might see five go between pick 10 and pick 32, but then we could see that, that pretty steep decline. Is there a position group, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that you are exceptionally excited about um, in terms of maybe – being able to earn a little more respect for that group. Is there yeah. one that maybe has the ability to make some money this week? Yeah, I mean, corner is obviously, but linebacker. Everyone, and I would even say, you know, what is one of the weakest positions in this draft? Linebacker. It really is just not a, a super top-heavy linebacker class, but players like Edgerin Cooper from Texas A&M, uh, is, I think he's going to do well here. Junior Colson from Michigan, Cedric Gray from North Carolina could all, you know, not only earn that respect, but also earn a lot of money here this week as they, you know, move themselves up. All right, let's open it up. We can talk about the offense now, too, we, because that okay, is good. where a lot yeah, of the right. stories are, yeah. and that's where people are really excited. Um, and the quarterbacks. We know that there are a lot of guys who aren't going to be working out, especially mm -hmm. some of those top names. Um, who are you excited to watch? Yeah, I would say J.J. McCarthy, uh, you know, especially at quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, because as you mentioned, we're not going to see Caleb Williams. We're not going to see Jaden Daniels. We're not going to see Drake May. This is such a huge opportunity for J.J. McCarthy to do what C.J. Stroud and Anthony Richardson did last year, which was tell people, tell evaluators, this is who I am as a player. This is who I am as a prospect. I'm not afraid of the competition. I'm going to go out here and throw and show you know, that I belong in the top ten or, or the top five. So I think this is a big week for McCarthy, uh, especially the quarterback spot. But this is a loaded wide receiver class, as I'm sure everyone is telling you all week. So when it's, when it's finally time for those guys to work out, I think a lot of people are going to uh, be sitting up in their seats a little bit. An interesting position that Marvin Harrison has taken is that he's not working out at the scouting combine. Mm -hmm. He's also not going to be having a pro day. How unique is that decision, and do you think it is to his detriment? I've never, so again, 13 years doing this, I've never heard of that before, uh, but I, I kind of applaud it because I think, especially in the messaging. Now, if he were a quarterback, we would say, no, I, act, like, I need to see you throw in person. I need to see you move in person. We need to put you through a workout that is different than what you did in college to kind of break some of your comfort zones. You're a wide receiver. You've dominated for two years. Like, I can watch. I can see everything. You've run every route that needs to be run at Ohio State. I think it's also, I love the message that he has come out and said, I'm preparing to be an NFL player. Like, my attention the next four months will be on being the best NFL wide receiver I can be instead of, like, let me train to be a, a track star for a couple months. And then I got to flip that around and I got to train for a pro day. And then I got to be worried about private workouts. So, if you need a 40-yard dash to like uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I would just watch his tape, uh, especially now we have GPS timing on these guys. So you can get a feel for his speed just by checking out the GPS time or, again, just watch him play in the Big Ten the last two years. A position group that has been talked about very little here in Indianapolis is the running backs. Yeah. Um, is that because they are not very good? I would <laughs> hope no, but right. we really just – it's been crickets when you talk about running yeah, backs. Yeah, I think the free agent running back class is a big part of it. You know, a lot of people are, are trying to figure out that domino first of Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and Austin Eckler. Like, what happens to those guys? Derrick Henry is in that mix. So you you got to let that domino fall. But I also do think, to your point, it's just there's not the talent this year that there was last year with B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. This year where there is a little bit of a drop-off, Jonathan Brooks from Texas – would have been the first running back taken, probably still will be, but suffered an ACL in November. And so that is kind of a, a little bit of a hit for this class. Is there somebody in that group who can make some real money this weekend? Oh, yeah, Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Absolutely can. I'm not pandering, I promise. <laughs> I'm not pandering to the Tennessee crowd. But he, I mean, when you watch him on tape, he is explosive. He's strong. This is the type of event where a player like that can really shine. Take this entire combine experience, everybody who's going to be participating, who are you the most excited to watch go through this process? Yeah, I, Roma Dunze from Washington because, I mean, such a breakout year, the last two years at Washington at wide receiver. And, you know, like we were saying with the quarterbacks, Malik Neighbors from LSU is not running. Marvin Harrison's not doing anything. <laughs> so I think Dunze has a huge opportunity. And, and just as a football fan, he's my favorite player in this class to watch. So uh, it would be fun to watch him actually work out too. Matt Miller, thank you so much for taking yeah, some time to hang out with us. This has been great. Great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. Delaney Walker joining us here on the OTP. Amy Wells, Rhett Bryan. Funny thing about the NFL Scouting Combine, 
I literally looked up and saw you walking past like a doorway, <laughs> jumped out of my seat, yelled Delaney in a room full of strangers, and now here you are in the OTP. This is how it happens. Yeah, yeah. You when you scream my name, I I got scared. <laughs> I, no, I was like, surprised. <laughs> I'm like, who knows me in here? Now, uh, now I, I, I was coming to look for you guys actually uh -huh. to come see what y'all was doing. You know, it was uh, haven't been in here this week yet, so uh, yeah. I thought I'd come in here and make my presence known. And you did. Yeah. <laughs> and you have. Yeah. So what are you doing this week uh, in Indianapolis? I'm, I'm, he I'm here with the Legends coordinators. Uh, pretty much, uh, I am a mentor uh, for the tight end group. Um, I follow them this whole week. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much just a, a ball of information for those guys. If they have anything they want to ask me about experiencing the combine, the combine or just what's to come next, you know, that's what I'm here for, to give them that information. And, and to be honest with you, this group of guys, they're great. They're wonderful. Because um, sometimes you would think because they get NIL deals that they're a little ahead of themselves. But – these guys are actually very respectful, and uh, they want the information. How do you relate to those guys or have these conversations with those guys? Because the NIL component is a very real thing. I mean, these are guys who have made some money on their own, some a lot of money. Yeah. And it has to influence the way that they're coming in because they have the staff already kind of. They have people that they've been working with. So some of those things that for – People like you who came in, people before really this year or last year, they had no experience in that world, and now they're kind of coming in these established brands. has to be hard to kind of maneuver leading guys through that, right? Yeah, you know, we, we actually, the Ledger's uh, community actually talked about how to deal with these guys that are getting these deals that are making millions of dollars before getting to the NFL, kind of seeming that, you know, that I'm bigger than what you think I am. i am already made a million dollars. Like, uh -huh. you can't tell me anything. But we haven't seen that. And that's and that's a, that's actually a good thing because I would say this is probably the first year where we have a lot of guys that's coming into the, the draft with NIL deals, um, but they all act like they still hungry. They still want it, and I and I like to see that. That's the that's the exciting part, and uh, hopefully it stays that way um, because you know again they will get more money as the year goes. Uh, but as long as these guys stay humble and and want to learn and, and want to be a part of something great, I'm 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 fine with the deals. Uh, but again, you just gotta adapt to what you're working with nowadays and I think they see me as an older brother that's not too older than them so <laughs> it works out for me being back in this place does it give we were talking to Ramon Foster about it on an earlier OTP some of those memories of combine experiences you get the shakes or something <laughs> you. I, you know what I always get nervous when I get I don't know <laughs> why because I'm not doing anything but it maybe it's because I all the coaches that I I've been been around. I'm going to get to see uh, my fellow media folks. I'm going to get to see. It's just I think I'm nervous in that aspect. But uh, it's changed so much, the combine, that it don't even feel like it. It's the combine to me here. It's like it feel like we're in a YouTube like, I don't even know what to call it, but it's like a YouTube sensation where everybody just filming. You got cameras everywhere. You just got – it's just a lot going on. It doesn't feel like when I came – so like when I came, we didn't have no workout gym. We had to do everything on a rug. We stayed in a train. We did our formals in a train. Like, we didn't come across to the stadium. These guys get a lot of free time to walk around. We didn't have that. So, yes, it is different in the aspect, but – I think that's what happens. The NFL evolves, the players evolve, and that's is what we're starting to see. It's like a social media out, outrage, and that's what's happening. What uh, do you know about this tight end class? Have you followed these guys? Have you watched some of their stuff? I've been watching a few of those guys. I feel like uh, this class, you know, it's, it's, it's some top guys in there right now. Um, couple, I, f I would say it's about three top guys that can go either first round or – third late late second round yeah um but we, we'll we'll see you know and i'm not really sure uh just talking to them they all seem like you know they just excited to be here and have the opportunity they just got to put them numbers up and i feel like uh they done they done well on film 
Now it's just what they gonna put it, what numbers they gonna put up out here to give them an edge. Can I ask you? Can I guess at the who the three are that you're talking about? Because obviously in, Brock Bowers, Georgia, I mean, yeah, he leads one. the class. Yeah, he number one. He's different, right? Yeah, he he is different. He's put on a he's put on a clinic show. He he he's kind of what the NFL is involving to with the type of tight end he is. He can catch passes. He can run routes. He can also block if you have to put him in the backfield and play fullback. He can do that as well. So I feel like he's he's pretty much NFL ready at the moment. Jatavian Sanders, University of Texas, is who I would have at two. That's number two. That is number two. That's who the star is on. Uh, I, and, again, he had another phenomenal, great season, uh, performed his butt off. Again, he's got that pro-style tight end where he can catch passes, he can run route, he can block, he can be the move guy. And I think that's that's pretty much what the league – is looking for is guys who can be able to be um, movable and play multiple spots. And he's one of those guys that could definitely improve his stock this week. I mean, that's what everybody's trying to do. But Brock Bowers, hey, listen, we know he's big, he's strong, he's fast, he's whatever. But that's a guy that could do that. And then the third guy, I would say it would be uh, Jaheim Bell from Florida State. Am I right there? I, I like him. I actually got okay. to sit in a formal with him. And uh, the guy – is genuine. He knows football. Um, he want to play football, uh, and to be to go to Florida State and what they did to turn around that program with the guys that they had. He was a he was a big reason why that happened. And in NFL, you want guys like that to help young quarterbacks. You need a guy that you can trust, that's consistent, that make plays, and then explosive on his feet. Uh, so he's one of those guys. I think that if he perform at a high level here. He may move up the draft board even more than what we think. See? This He's done his homework. Delaney Walker, 82 man. never lets us down. <laughs> I was not expecting to see you, and now I'm just blown away by oh. your wealth of knowledge. Well, um, I'm around these guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, your work with the Legends community, what else does that entail? Uh, so with, with them, we help guys transition out the NFL. So pretty much we help guys get line of duty, medical exams um we help guys get on if you want to do the bill walsh um internship if you want to go to any type of boot uh, boot count ca boot camp casting we can get you guys in that so we just try to find resources that guys can't get and you call me and if i can't answer it i will find a person who can answer it and get the right information to you so what we do is just try to help guys make that make transitioning out the nfl easier for guys because it is very hard to transition out the nfl it ain't like any other job where you get paid millions of dollars and then retire at 34. so it's a way we know it is very difficult. We, we've seen the numbers that a lot of guys get in trouble at this point. So we just try to make it easy for them to transition and try to find another job or some type of income that can help them uh, until they get to their retirement. Why is that something you're so passionate about? I mean, because I'm one of them. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys. And, you know, the other guys who paved the way for us, they, they didn't get to make as much money as we did. So it's, it's difficult on them. They still trying to figure out what's next or what's going, what's going to happen when I pass, how I'm going to leave money to my family. So it's very important because I'll be one of those guys uh, at, at one point. And I just want to make sure that I leave a mark knowing that I tried to help and change what the culture was. How important is it? to have someone like yourself to talk to these guys? Because obviously this program's been around for a while. You've had guys who came before you to help you through the way. Does it give more credence? Are you be able to listen? It's like, all right, Delaney's done this. I know who Delaney Walker. He's done this. He wouldn't leave me wrong. I need to listen up. Yeah, you. And it's, it's crazy because, like, the guys come straight to you not thinking that they may not know who you are. And they be like, man, you Delaney Walker. Damn, 14 years, bro. Tell me how you did it. And I, it, it, it kind of blows me away sometimes because I'm like, damn, he know who I am. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, let me let me tell you, this is what I this is what I did. This is how I did it. I took care of my body. I get my treatment. I made sure I was in, at the facility before everybody to take care of my body before we go to the practice. Just just to hear them guys want to know is it, it, I, it sometimes it like brings it makes me happy because you know. That's what we're here for. I want to give you the knowledge to make sure you're successful in this league because we need this league to stay running. This is what pays our bills, pays our mortgage, and without them, we won't have it. So we got to keep these guys strong, make sure that they can play this game, and make sure that this game lasts. So 
I try to do as much as I can and give them as in, much information as possible, um, whoever wants it. But like I said, all my guys been wanting the information. I literally just left the the Noble practice facility talking to the guys, giving them information on how I stayed um, stayed healthy and not didn't have any leg injuries. And we talked about stretching and stuff like that. So. I mean, it, it, it's big, and I, I'm excited that these guys want to learn. For Matt Miller and Delaney Walker, our surprise guest, thank you for listening to this edition of the OTP.